Hi everyone, in this video we're going to cut out and prep our lining for our structured bodice and get it ready to be sewn. All right. So here I've laid out um, two layers of my lining fabric and two layers of this woven interfacing called Siri. All right. um, I like this uh, interfacing, it's kind of a lighter interfacing on the fashion fabric we're using a little bit of a stiffer interfacing to add more structure to the outside but we don't need too much structure on the lining um, the boning we'll, we'll, we will be boning the lining that will add a structure to it what we really want to do with the lining and just just is to just give it a little bit of durability and just a little bit of structure and um, make it so it's a little more it's a little stronger to support the boning that we'll be stitching to it when the time comes all right, so let's go ahead and lay out our patterns real quick on this lining. And we'll line it up with our length grain. All right, so don't forget to measure off your salvage and make sure that your patterns are perfectly on grain. Looks good. And then go ahead and pin them on. All right, we're all pinned on. Now we can go ahead and cut everything out. All right, there it is, all cut out. Now we can go ahead and get this ready to be stitched. Before we can do that, we need to make sure we uh, interface each of our lining pieces with the interfacing. So we'll go ahead and unpin these patterns. Okay, and for each pattern we're going to just pin baste around the edges of them just to hold that fabric and interfacing together. Make sure that your lining fabric and interfacing are lining up around the edges. So, and now we're going to go ahead and do a row of diagonal basting stitches. Okay, so what we want to do now is we have a needle and thread all ready to go. Do not put a knot at the end of your thread because this is going to be pulled out later. We're going to take a half inch stitch at the bottom, pull through and take another stitch in the same exact place, and then we're going to move up about three or four inches and take another stitch and continue doing that until you get to the top of your pattern piece. It kind of creates this diagonal um, stitch here. It's a diagonal basting stitch and this is pretty good at kind of holding these two pieces of fabric together until we're ready to start sewing. There we go. So let's go ahead and do that to all of our other pieces as well. All right, there we go. Everything has been pin basted and basted. All right, and now all our pieces have been prepped and they're ready to go. We can just go ahead and stitch together our lining and then bone it. All right, so let's go ahead to the sewing machine and start um, putting this together. All right, we're at the machine here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stay stitch all our necklines. So this is my front center panel and we're gonna stay stitch our necklines at whatever the seam allowance is. So my seam allowance is half inch. 
So that's what I'll stay stitch at. And I'm going to stay stitch using my normal construction stitch. There we go. Okay, and when we stay stitch, we don't back tack or anything, so we can just go right on to the next piece and continue stitching it. So here's my one of my side front panels, and we're just going to do this to all the necklines, so here we go. Alright, there we go. We stay stitched all our necklines. Go ahead and clip them apart. All right, so now that we've stay stitched all our necklines, there's one more thing we want to stay stitch, and that's um, our center back. And we're not going to stitch right on our center back, but a quarter of an inch from the cut edge of the center back. Okay, so here are my center back. This is my back panel. This right here is the um, back of the center back panel. I'm going to stay stitched at a quarter of an inch just to hold these two pieces of fabric together because once this is all sewn together everything will have been stay stitched uh, um, together with my um, lining or interfacing so except for the center back and because I don't want these two pieces of fabric the interfacing and the lining to come apart I'm going to stay stitch that. Okay so let's do that right now we're going to stay stitch those at a quarter of an inch. Alright, so both back panels have now been stay stitched at a quarter of an inch. Alright, so now we can go ahead and start sewing our bodice together. Now one thing I want to mention is how come we're stay stitching all the necklines. Okay, we're doing this for a couple reasons. Uh, the first reason, the most important reason, is if you think about this, a lot of these necklines are, cutting, are cut through the bias, okay? So the last thing we want to happen to these necklines as we sew, on, sew this garment together is for these to stretch, okay? If, um, and you should always stay stitch your muslin necklines as well. Um, so if this neckline would, um, has stretched, first of all, I'm not going to be able to put the garment together correctly, or when I go to fit it to you know, a client or dress form or whatever, it's not going to lay right on that client and you'll have to just cut a new one. Okay, so that's very important to always stay stitch your necklines, along with armholes and waist and things like that. Okay, the other reason um, we're stay stitching this, okay, which is not necessarily the main reason, but was more of a guide, is we're going to end up boning this. Okay, so this stay stitching is actually a guide for us to know where to stop our boning. Okay, and we'll get more into that. But basically, when we bone this, we want to stop our boning an eighth of an eighth of an inch away from that stay stitching. Okay, so when we go and start boning this, we'll talk more about that a little bit. But um, those are the two main reasons we're stay stitching them. Okay. After we've sewn this together, we're going to go ahead and stay stitch the bottom, the bottom of this as well. But we'll do that once it's stitched together. Okay. So let's go ahead and start stitching this together. We'll start with our front and our side front panels, and we'll just work our way towards the back. Um, whenever I have a very curved seam like this side front panel right here, it's very curved, and this one's much straighter on the front panel. Okay, so you can see how curved this one is and how this one is much straighter. I always like to walk them out because typically the curved seam tends to be a little longer than this one. Not always, but you know, for the most part, 90% of the time it does. So I'm just going to walk it out and see if there's some ease, meaning that one's a little longer than the other. And I'll just do that by bringing up the cut edges together and walking them out and seeing if one is slightly longer than the other. And it looks like my front panel is just barely a little longer 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one, the, the one that's a little longer, against the feed dogs of the sewing machine. Okay, these feed dogs come up and grab that bottom layer of fabric and they pull it. Okay, the top layer of fabric is just getting kind of tamped on by this presser foot. All right, so whatever uh, layer is on the bottom is going to get pulled on a lot more than the top layer of fabric. And because of that, it will ease it in a little bit. I mean, it will pull it kind of to the size of the layer that's on top. Okay. So we're going to use that to our advantage and go ahead and put the longer layer on the bottom against the feed dogs. All right, and we can start sewing this together. All right, so we have, for this I have half inch seam allowance and this is permanent, so I'm going to back tack at the beginning and end. Here we go, let's go ahead and start sewing this together. Now here, you can see that if I pull this together, can you see it on camera? Yes. All right, if I push it up a little bit, you can see that this is still just a little longer than that. So I'm just gonna kind of hold back this top layer a little bit and kind of push under the bottom layer and let those feed dogs do their job and ease it. And it should bring it right together and we should end evenly once we get to the top. And we're already there, okay. Just checking that. Yep, and there we go. All right. And there it is. It worked out beautifully. All right. Nice and even. Nice and even at the bottom. All right, so let's go ahead and continue and sew this whole thing together. All right, there we are. It's all sewn together. Give it kind of an idea what it looks like. It's the right side. All right, we need to press this now, but before we press it, I want to do one more thing. I actually want to um, stay stitch the bottom of this bodice lining, all right? Um, typically, we want to press open our seam allowance first. Just for time, I'm going to um, just to open them up myself and before I press it and then stay stitch the bottom of this at a half inch. Okay. Typically I would recommend, um, uh, ironing it first. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we're, we're doing this because we want to have, we have a curve at the bottom. Okay. But we also want to make sure that we need, it's also a guide of where to stop our boning when we're putting that in. Now stay stitch the bottom of this. And again, it's very important that all these seam allowances at the bottom are open, okay? If they're not, then this won't lay flatly and nicely the way we want it. We'll get a nice finish at the bottom, all right? So there we go. Let's go to the iron and press this. All right, so we're back at the, uh, at the iron. So we're ready to press the, all these seams open. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this is a fitted a pretty fitted bodice, okay? So we have some tight curves 
like in the in the bust area princess line and then at the waists okay so we're gonna need to clip those to be able to um, to get a nice clean seam and make sure that they give us the contour that we want so we're gonna press these open and then wherever we have that tight contour we'll clip all right so here at the waist I'm gonna clip in right to the stitching line but not through it okay and you need to make sure you clip right into it to get the contour that the pattern dictates all right um, so make sure you clip right in there and I usually like to clip again wherever we have that contour we need I typically clip in at the waist and then like an inch or two above it and that usually releases the seam allowance and allows it to pull away from itself um, spreading enough so that it can give that contour and be able to curve around the body. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and if you have a ham, a pressing ham like this, it really is the best thing to press on because you can just, because a lot of this is going to be curved and contoured and it really does allow for the best press around those curves. Okay, that looks good. Again, you don't want to overclip. If he doesn't need any clipping, then don't do it. But you also don't want to underclip, meaning if there's a question and you're not sure if it's contouring well enough, give it a clip. And it should lay flatter. All right, you're at our princess lines. These have a lot of contour around them. And so they take a little more clipping. And tipping, and depending on how um, large the bust is, might depend on how much more you're going to have to clip. Usually if it's a larger bust, there's more contour and you'll have to clip more. But if it's a smaller bust, there's not always as much clipping. And these seams to press them can be a little more difficult. So make sure you're pulling those two panels that create that seam allowance in opposite directions. You get a nice tight clean seam on the other side. You don't want any puckers or you don't want any pleats or folds. You want to make sure that seam is right out to the edge and not kind of pulled down inside of itself. And the ham is great because it really allows you to kind of get up into those curves and really press them cleanly. In these curved scenes, you kind of have to press in sections sometimes. You can't just run your iron down the whole thing because of that contour. So you're kind of pressing in between the clips. And you might have to readjust and then press some more. That's what it's going to do it. That looks good. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. It's halfway done. I'll quickly press the rest of this. All right, so here it is, all pressed. Okay. 
See all my seam allowances are pressed open and I've clipped wherever I needed to to create that contour. Okay, so this is the wrong side of it. And I flip it over. See the inside of the lining. Okay. And you can see all the seams are nice and flat and clean. Ready to go. Okay, so now our lining has been prepped, are sewn together, and we can go ahead and bone it. Okay, so that's the next video, and you can find a link to that in the description below. And um, I hope to see you there. All right, everyone, thanks for watching.